Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you've never been to the channel and seen one of these unedited and off-camber videos, they are exactly that. They are completely unedited videos about any topic basically that I get asked a lot or that people tend to search quite often in off-road forums and things like that. Today we're gonna talk all about gears and tire sizes for what gears and what common Jeeps with common engines. And uh, I'm going to show you at the end of the video why upgrading to a larger axle at certain gear ratios for certain tire sizes is important uh, with regard to the ring and pinion. So check it out. Gears. All right, guys. So the first Jeep we're going to talk about is the ever so common TJ not really going to go much older than that but the same information pretty much applies for a yj also now really common upgrade in tire size on a tj nowadays is a 35 inch tire but there's a few axle options on a tj that we're going to have to talk about first and then the engines so on a tj if you are lucky enough to have a later tj and have a rubicon you have a dana 44 in the front as well as in the rear if you don't have a Rubicon, you probably, hopefully, have a Dana 44 in the rear and then a low pinion Dana 30 in the front. You might have a Dana 35 in the rear. Now, as far as the Dana 35 axle is concerned and what your gear options are, you have some, but I wouldn't take advantage of any of them. The Dana 35 is a weak axle. I would absolutely just replace it. Now, if you have a Dana 44 in the front and the rear, you can get away with running some pretty big gears, but they're not all that necessary for a 35 inch tire, right? Very commonly a 35 inch tire, if you're running the four liter, which is the straight six more popular choice for off-roading, I would absolutely go with a 488 gear ratio, okay? 456, you can get away with that if you have a manual, right? But if you have an automatic, 488 gear ratio is perfect um, on that rig for keeping the tire size and the uh, gear ratio and how hard the engine and transmission is all working together uh, as a system, right? You're gonna get your torque back, you'll have the performance, you'll have better fuel mileage than if you left it alone and still ran that 35 inch tire. Now, if we move up to a 37 or a 38 with that same 44 front and rear, you're gonna wanna go to like a 513 whether you have the automatic or the manual, okay? If you have a Dana 30 in the front, same gears apply, but you're going to want to be careful, okay? Because that low pinion Dana 30, the, the pinion, meaning low pinion, is it's different from the later Dana 30s, right? Even the Dana 44 is different from the later Dana 44s. But the low pinion puts the pinion on the bottom side of the differential as opposed to the top side on your front axle. And it's at a weaker point. Uh, where the power actually transfers into that ring gear and turns those tires. So it's not gonna be quite as strong and that ring and pinion is a little bit small. We're gonna talk about why that's an issue later. Now, if you're going up to a 40 inch tire on a rig like that, you're definitely gonna wanna upgrade to a one ton axle. And in a little while, again, we'll talk about why. Now, moving on to the ever so popular JK JKU platform, right? It's a super popular Jeep. You can see it in my other videos about why it's so popular. They made over 2 million of them, right, in their, in their run. It's just a super, super common rig. But here's some differences about different JKs. The earlier JKs had a 3.8 V6. Now, that 3.8 didn't make much horsepower, didn't make much torque. Stupid reliable but it didn't make much of anything when it came to horsepower and torque. So you're gonna wanna run a gear that's a little bit steeper, a little bit numerically higher, right? Than you would on a later JK, with came which, with, which came with a different engine. It came with a 3.6, made a lot more power. It even had a better transmission with an extra gear in it. Um, so if you have an earlier JK and you're gonna run like a 35, you're probably gonna to wanna to run a 488, maybe a 513, right? Now there's some wiggle room in there because sometimes people run a 456 and they'll say it's fine and it's on the low side of what you'd wanna run, but you can get away with it. When you go to a 37 or a 38, you're definitely gonna want that 513 or preferably even a 533 gear in that axle, okay? Because that 
513 or a 533 I know sounds crazy for a 37 or a 38 inch tire but you got to remember that that motor makes no power right so having that gear ratio will multiply the torque number for you so that you can actually get it to move down the road as well as on the trail now the later JK's okay the 3.6 makes about 80 more horsepower right 80 to 100 more horsepower and like I said a minute ago it has an extra gear in the transmission which means as it shifts between first, second, third, the, the RPM difference in each gear as it shifts is not as drastic. It keeps you more in the power band, right? And then that power band also makes more power. So you're gonna notice some differences on those gears and it doesn't matter what axle you have, Dana 44s or the Dana 44, Dana 30 combo. Um, now Rubicons, right, in an early or in a later JK, have the Dana 44s front and rear and they come standard with a 410 gear ratio. So if you're gonna run only a 35 inch tire, there's a lot of people that don't re-gear, they continue to run the 410. They don't use fifth gear, right? The top gear in that automatic transmission all that often on the highway, uh, especially in slightly hilly conditions. And I mean very gradually hilly conditions, it'll drop out of fifth gear almost instantly, but you can kind of get away with it, okay? Um, especially because the Rubicon has a lower uh, four-wheel low gear ratio as well. So off-road, it's not the worst. But again, a 488, 456, that would be better for a 35-inch tire. I personally would run a 488. Not the 513, like I said, with the 38, right? But a 488. Now, if you're going to step it up and you're going to go to a 37, 38-inch tire, you're definitely going to want to go to a 513 not the 533 like we had said with the prior JK making less power but the 513 in this Jeep because of the power because of the extra gear in the transmission you'll be just fine but even on a Dana 30 you'll be fine because remember it's not the same Dana 30 that it was in the older generation TJ's it actually is a little bit bigger so that ring gear in pinion which again we'll talk about in just a minute is actually able to handle the power a little bit better but if you go to a 40 inch tire, okay, you're definitely gonna wanna go to like a 533 and ton swap it. You really shouldn't be running a Dana 44 with that 40 inch tire. You can see why in some of my other videos that I've done about comparing the axles. But, um, you know, 40 inch tire is just kind of a different ball game, right? You really shouldn't be doing that on the stock axles. So at this point, We've talked about the gears, we've talked about the really common ones, right? Because there's so much information out there on the internet that's out there from all these keyboard warriors and keyboard mechanics. And some of that information's right, but some of that information is super wrong. Um, and you're just not gonna be happy if you do it. Uh, people just don't want to admit it when they're on the internet. But here's the thing, okay? It comes down to it. I'm gonna put a glove on here. And I have a, a ring gear, okay, from a Dana 30, all right? Now, this ring and pinion from the Dana 30 is pretty small, and I'm gonna compare it later to a Dana 60 ring gear, and you'll understand why in just a second. Because the, the main question here, all right, is your Dana 30 ring gear is pretty small, okay? This is not that big for people that haven't really seen them and don't really know what they look like, all right? And your pinion, okay, is right here. Now, this is a decent size pinion head, and the reason for that is actually gonna be because this is a factory gear ratio for a Dana 30, okay? When you numerically move the gear ratio higher, you gear it down or you numerically make it higher, right? 456, 488, 513. The head of this actually gets smaller. It has less teeth on it, okay? And when you when you mate this up to, to your ring gear, okay? This is what is connected to your drive shaft. This spins, which in turn spins your ring gear, which then turns your axles and turns your tires. So this, this contact between this and your ring gear is the only place, okay, right there, is the only place where there's contact and what you're putting all the power through to push those wheels and tires. So when you start to upgrade it, this gets smaller. This stays the same size, right? Less teeth, but the same size. This gets smaller, and, and the contact patch between these, which isn't big to begin with, gets smaller. So you have a smaller area where you're putting all that power through and then you're multiplying it out to tires which are getting bigger and have more grip and it's just a lot of pressure on a really small ring. Now at this point you might be wondering, yeah, but you know, Dana 44s in particular, 
anybody that's been around or cruised the internet knows that Dana 44s can handle a lot of power, right? It's pretty common in the drag racing world. Um, it's, it's not the most common axle, but it's not uncommon to see a Dana 44 in a vehicle making five, 600 horsepower and tearing down the drag strip, right? You see them in hot rods, things like that. And five or 600 horsepower is a lot more than what your Jeep makes, okay? But the reason, okay, that those gears don't work in a vehicle with big tires when you change that gear ratio is simply because that contact patch is getting smaller, okay? It's the same reason why the Dana 44 in the new Rubicons and the JLs with the 392 works, okay? Until you really start re-gearing it and putting bigger tires on it and people can blow up ring and pinions, and they do, all right? So in comes, all right, in comes the Dana 60. Now, Dana 60 ring gear, I have this one in plastic because it's covered in oil. Dana 60 ring gear, you can already tell, is a lot bigger than your Dana 30 ring gear, okay? Now, the reason it's bigger and the pinion is also gonna be a lot bigger as well, okay? But here's the cool thing. This is a ring gear for a 538 gear set, okay? I know on Dana 44s, it's a 533. On one tons, it's a 538. But this 538 gear set, when you, remember what I said earlier, when you gear down a pinion, okay, and you put a 533 or a 538 or something like that, this is gonna get really, really, really small. Well, the 538 pinion is actually still bigger than this, even geared down to a 538. So you can imagine at a stock size how big this pinion would be and how big the contact patch would be in a gear like this, okay? It's still enormous, right? That is the difference. Because here's the thing. When you guys when you guys look up what a Dana 60 ring gear can take torque-wise, okay? It's not that far away from what a Dana 44 ring gear can take torque-wise at factory gear specs with that factory-sized contact patch. But when you start gearing them down, they both take less torque, but the amount of torque that that Dana 44 takes reduces very, very, very quickly and very, very dramatically compared to a Dana 60, which has a much bigger ring gear and pinion to start. So when you gear it down, even though it gets smaller, it's still pretty big, right? On top of the fact that the axle tubes are bigger, the C's are bigger, the ball joints are bigger, the brakes are bigger, the axle shafts are bigger, everything's bigger to handle, bigger tires and more abuse, right? All right, guys, so there you have it, right? Gears. I think you've gotten a crash course for people that have maybe some questions about what to run, what gears to run, on what tires, with what engines, right? We cleared all that up. We also discussed something that most people don't talk about, and that is why a bigger ring gear is stronger. It's not just the physical size, because again, as we talked about, the physical size of a Dana 60 is bigger than the physical size of a Dana 44, but it's stock gear ratios with that stock pinion contact patch, they both can handle near the same amount of torque. But as soon as you increase that gear ratio, that's when things drastically change. Not only does it reduce on the Dana 60 what it can handle, it reduces the Dana 44, but it reduces the Dana 44 much drastically, okay? Much more drastically. So guys, get out there, build something. Thanks for the support, and uh, let's keep it going.